This is part one in a two-part collaboration with Ohio State University astrophysicist Dr. Paul Sutter. You can find part two on his channel, Ask a Spaceman, link in the end screen of this video and in the description below, where I ask him specific questions about some of the universe's strangest stars, including the infamous Zhabilsky star that I cover on this channel, which seems to contain elements heavier than plutonium, which, at least up until recently, were not thought to exist in nature except under laboratory conditions. The universe is ancient by our standards, about 13.8 billion years old, but in a way it could still be very young in comparison to how long it might yet be around. Unfortunately, we don't know the answer to the question of how long the universe will live. If for example the universe is a false vacuum, not existing at its lowest energy state, it could at any time tunnel to that state, which would reconfigure all matter in the universe. Or, another take is that it could endure for more than trillions of years if the heat death theory is correct, which is the notion of the universe lasting indefinitely as everything eventually goes dark and cold. But none of that is certain. But if it does endure for immense amounts of time, it will grow increasingly strange as it ages and new types of stars will begin to appear that do not yet exist because the universe just simply has not been around long enough for them to form. The universe is currently full of heat and usable energy, and will remain so for an immense amount of time. But eventually that usable energy will reduce as the universe expands and cools its way towards a temperature of absolute zero. We often talk about the sun as though its life will end when it reaches the red giant stage in 5 billion years, but this is not the case. Life on Earth will surely end from the extreme temperatures, but the Sun will continue to go through other phases of life, with the remnant core persisting as a white dwarf. A white dwarf is essentially an incredibly hot cinder, a stellar remnant holding enough leftover heat to last for trillions of years, but with no nuclear fusion still occurring. These stellar remnants already exist. In fact, Sirius B, a companion of the brightest star in the night sky, is a white dwarf only 8.6 light years away. But what hasn't yet happened is for a white dwarf to cool so much that it becomes a hypothetical kind of star called a black dwarf and radiates little to nothing. In fact, no star in the universe has ever reached this stage. But what we have found are several cool white dwarfs that are extremely ancient at 11 to 12 billion years that seem to be on their way to this state. In fact, these stars are one measure in determining the age of the universe itself. But it will take many, many billions of years for them to cool and go black. Once that happens, they will be invisible, other than their gravitational effects on other objects. And someday, the universe will be full of these cinder stars until it too goes black. As an aside, because of their longevity, the radiant energy of a white dwarf could be harnessed by a civilization as a source of power, even towards the end of the universe. In fact, Dyson spheres encasing white dwarfs are thought to be one of the more viable types of that technology since they would not need to be anywhere near as large as one enclosing a main sequence star. With one, a civilization could sustain itself long after most stars have left the main sequence. Perhaps someday, if we survived the sun's red giant phase, we might return to our solar system of origin and once again use the remains of the sun for power. But it would not be a permanent state of affairs. As the remnant sun cools to become a black dwarf, the less energy would be available to us until all that's left is a very cold cinder and we'd have to move on. There are still certain questions that we do not know the answers to, such as do protons eventually decay? If they do, or if weakly interactive massive particles are found to exist, these exotic interactions could keep a black dwarf very slightly warm for a longer amount of time in the distant far future. But what of stars that live for a very long time as normal hydrogen fusing stars, specifically the type M red dwarfs that last billions of years? Will they have a stage in life that no star has yet gone through? The answer is yes, essentially the universe hasn't been around long enough for one of these to exhaust its hydrogen supply. Here, there is a hypothetical intermediate stage, termed a blue dwarf, where the star becomes hotter and thus bluer, until eventually it too evolves into a white dwarf, and finally goes black. 
So far we've covered fairly intuitive endgame scenarios for stars as we know them, providing that the universe endures for a long period of time. But there are other possibilities for very far future stars, and they get very strange in comparison to what we see now. The first of these is a hypothetical star known as a frozen star. This type of star is dependent on metal. As the universe ages and more supernovas and kilonovas occur, the more metal becomes present in the universe. This changes the rules for stars. Currently a brown dwarf is something between a planet and a star, many times larger than Jupiter, but not large enough to start fusing hydrogen. But with more metals around, stars like this that form in the future might become able to fuse hydrogen and thus result in extremely cool stars that simply can't exist now. They would be so cool that some of them would have a surface temperature of 0 degrees Celsius, hence the name Frozen. Compare this to the sun as it is now at over 5,500 degrees Celsius. This would lead to an unbelievably dim class of star complete with water ice clouds. Someday, these may be among the universe's most common stars as their hot counterparts disappear. And now we go to a far future that is honestly hard to comprehend. For this last type of star to exist, the amount of time you need for it to happen is truly mind-boggling. Think as far as years, 10 followed by 1500 zeros. This one goes back to the possibility of proton decay. We don't yet know if protons eventually do that. If they do, this kind of star is off the table. If they do not, then the situation would then be dependent on the phenomenon of quantum tunneling. We know that quantum tunneling exists, despite it being a very odd, counterintuitive property of the universe. In fact, in electronics there is something called a tunnel diode that depends on the effect that was developed by Sony back in the 1950s. It amounts essentially to subatomic particles passing through barriers that they usually could not. Most of the time, they can't get past a barrier any more than you can walk through a wall, but occasionally they simply do pass through. And you might pass through a wall as well if you waited long enough for it to happen. It's all about probabilities and time. A way to visualize this is through the particle wave duality nature of quantum mechanics. This says that subatomic particles are more like smears on space-time than dots floating around. Because of that, you can't really tell exactly where they are at any given time. The universe simply doesn't let you. As a result, a particle that's heading towards a barrier has a probability that it might actually be located beyond that barrier, and sometimes it is, allowing it to seemingly pass through an impassable barrier when in fact it was all just a matter of probabilities of where it actually was. This is a can of worms in a universe that could last for an infinite amount of time. If you wait long enough, entire objects such as a person could randomly teleport somewhere else, and even instantaneously cross the universe. Yes, it's possible you could wake up on another planet one day, or inside a star. But in a universe that does not last an infinite amount of time, this is not so much of an issue, since the odds are ridiculous without infinite time for it to happen. But on a smaller time scale than infinite, this effect could allow for the eventual formation of iron stars. This would be a star where quantum tunneling would allow fusion to occur, ultimately producing iron. Eventually, as this process completes, you would be left with a former star converted into a sphere of iron. But given the time scales needed to form one of these, it's beyond unlikely that there will be anyone left in the universe to observe the final remnants of stars. The available energy in the universe at this time would be so low that anyone left at the end of the universe as we know it would have hung up their hats and moved into oblivion. But these kinds of stars are merely what awaits us in the future as the universe ages. Currently, there are other types of bizarre stars, many of which I've covered on this channel in the past, some of which I have not. To explore those, join Paul and I for part 2 on his channel where I ask an astrophysicist about specific examples of strange stars, and we discuss the possibilities of what else might be out there. Thanks for listening, I am John Michael Godier. And I'm Dr. Paul M. Sutter, and we hope you enjoyed this collaboration. And be sure to subscribe to our channels for regular in-depth explorations into the worlds of science, astrophysics, and the possibilities of what may await us as we explore this amazing universe in which we live.